Greetings one and all two universes, in this show we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two characters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right or wrong. And don't forget to stay tuned after the episode to see the next fight so you can make your predictions in the comments below. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the next episode. With that said, let's meet our two fighters. Piccolo, the ultimate babysitter who is better at raising Saiyans than actual Saiyans. And Boros, the dominator of the universe who survived a punch from Saitama. This is Universes. It's Big Green! Alright, anyone who gets that reference has the right to high-five themselves now. Now this Namekian fighter had quite a few plans to destroy Goku after losing to him in the World Martial Arts Tournament. But things went a bit differently when a Saiyan by the name of Raditz showed up. Piccolo was forced to kill Goku then and there as it was the only way to stop this powerful Saiyan. But then of course, there was still a part of Goku that remained. His son, Gohan. Instead of killing the child as well, Piccolo decided to kidnap him and become the best Dragon Ball father in history by beating the crap out of him repeatedly. Now you may think Piccolo is some kind of little punk for picking on little kids like that, but trust me when I say that his insane power is far more useful for destroying foes than just mere children. In combat, Piccolo has great strategic skills. He was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Son Goku in his martial arts prime before everything went to key blasts and power-ups. When it comes to his physical body, he has plenty of advantages to outmatch his foes. Piccolo has regeneration abilities that lets him regrow limbs. This is very useful in battle as he can tear off arms that become broken and useless and replace them with new working arms. He can move faster than even the trained eye can track, he can create many clones, and he even has stretchy arms that he can wrap around his foes to trap them. Piccolo is constantly wearing heavy-weighted clothing, so it's as if he's always training no matter what he does as long as he has those clothes on. Once he removes them, he can move much quicker and attack much faster as he doesn't have the weights holding him down. But of course, as a Dragon Ball character, Piccolo also has plenty of iconic special attacks. The Special Beam Cannon is possibly Piccolo's most effective attack. He can increase the strength by charging it up longer as this powerful beam drills through anything it touches. And it can be done with a single arm so Piccolo can still move and attack freely while charging it. He has the Hell Zone Grenade which surrounds the foe in a ton of key blasts before trapping them in the explosion. And he has a Mouth Laser with a way too impossible to pronounce name so I'm not even going to bother. Piccolo isn't all bark either. Despite the gigantic leaps in power that the Saiyans have made, Piccolo has never been too far behind. Even in his earlier days, Piccolo was able to destroy the moon with an attack that could reach it in two seconds. That's a near light speed attack! But again, this was in his earlier days. Since then, he's fused with more Namekians to become even faster and more powerful. He was able to handle Frieza in his second form, who was already at Planet Buster status in his base form. And Piccolo has gotten strong enough to damage Frost, who was able to handle attacks from a Super Saiyan 1 Goku. Piccolo might have even defeated Frost too if Frost hadn't have cheated. He's battled with Saiyans, androids, and is always ready for a fight whenever he's needed. But Piccolo has accomplished a feat that even Goku couldn't dream of achieving. He raised a kid! And let's not forget his most useful attack, the Clothes Beam! Okay, okay, I'm done fooling around now, I think you get the point of how strong Piccolo is. Let's see if his opponent will give him some decent competition. Imagine being a warrior with unfathomable power. Imagine conquering all your foes with absolute ease. No fun, no enjoyment, just casually killing anyone who stands in your way. 
This was the tragic curse Boros had to face with his strength. He traveled across the universe searching for worthy foes as he conquered planet after planet. But Boros was told that his thirst for a true battle would soon be quenched once he came across a certain life form. He spent nearly 20 years traveling in search of this worthy opponent. While his crew thought it was all a trick to lure Boros away, the dominator of the universe believed it. His patience soon paid off once he visited a little planet called Earth where he met his match in the form of a caped baldy known as Saitama. Boros is quite physically impressive. His homeworld had a very harsh environment that he was able to survive thanks to his regenerative abilities. He can greatly increase the speed of his healing to regenerate limbs right after losing them, or he can even pull himself back together after being blown to bloody bits. Boros's power takes three different forms. His first form keeps his power held inside a suit of armor, relying more on defense than strength. His second form is when the armor is removed and his powerful strength is unleashed. He can move and react at incredible speeds and fire beams that would vaporize any normal human. This form is a perfect balance of strength and defense. But his third and final meteoric burst form gives him his top physical strength but also puts a tremendous strain on his body, shortening his lifespan. As such, he only uses it as a last resort or trump card to end a battle as quickly as possible. With his meteoric burst attack, he travels at speed so quickly that multiple after images are created as he punches and tosses around his opponent in a deadly combo. And if that doesn't work, Boros has one final beam attack. The Planet Buster Roar Cannon, or Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon, depending on if you're watching the anime or reading the manga. Now there's lots of debate on whether this attack destroys the planet entirely or just the surface because of what Boros says. But an official data book has been translated to reveal that the Planet Buster Roar Cannon does in fact destroy the entire planet. But what else would you expect from the being who actually had the strength to deal some damage to Saitama? Not just that, but he was able to hit Saitama so hard that he launched him to the moon at near light speed. Even hitting something as light as an apple to the moon in 12 seconds would require town levels of force. So just imagine the amount of destructive force it would take Boros to launch someone of Saitama's weight to the moon in 2 seconds. And being able to keep up with a casual Saitama would put Boros at sub-relativistic speeds. His healing factor allowed him to survive a normal punch and a barrage of consecutive normal punches from Saitama. In fact, his armor was strong enough to allow him to survive a punch without even needing to regenerate. He certainly sounds deserving of the Dominator of the Universe title, but let's see if he can be Dominator of the Universes and defeat Piccolo. Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. While your stamina gradually decreases Shut down. up. Huh? Blah, blah, blah. You're boring me out of my mind. Are you finished? Not yet! So I'm here to talk about, um, Doom versus, um, I think it was Piccolo versus someone I don't know his name is, but I know he's from One Punch Man. I don't know much about either of them, but my money is on Piccolo, because I I know um he's one of he's one of the um, Saiyan Wars, and I think he can beat someone. And I think I don't remember who, but I think like the dude was at speed of sound kind of level, and. I don't remember who, but I remember just him being killed by one punch man. But I don't I don't know much, but I don't think he can amp up his power, and I'm pretty sure Piccolo can, and I just think Hello. Piccolo will be there. my name is Leroy. I want to make my predictions to Leopold the Race, Boros versus Piccolo. I, I hope I... I have the right name for that one punch man villain. Really, I don't know a shit about one punch man. Um, my predictions are that Piccolo wins, even though it might seem that Boros is way more OP because he's from the one punch man universe and everything there is so overpowered and overhyped, whatever. Yeah, I say that Piccolo wins because it's stated that he's planet level and Loboros get killed by Saitama from the serious, serious, serious punch, if I'm right. Eh. If you have no idea, then just 
call your attack serious, serious, serious punch, you know that you're not entertaining. Yeah. And how I saw it, it's not planet level, so he was killed by an attack that was less than planet level, and Piccolo is over planet level, so <laughs> he's even for Piccolo. But even if Lobos wins, I think that anyway, what outcome it gets, it will be it will be settled in one punch. And no, that's not because Boros from the One Punch Man universe. It's because Loboros kicked Saitama with light speed from Earth to Moon. And I think that Piccolo would survive that. So if Piccolo gets the first hit, he wins. If Boros gets the first hit, Boros wins. That's my prediction. So, Leo, you better get a good outcome for this. I get a good out. Get a good argument. All right, the calculation's complete, the results are in, the winner is... Piccolo! And let's be honest here, did you really see any other outcome coming? For those who did see a different outcome, it was because of the healing factor, wasn't it? We went over this last episode, guys, come on! While Boros's healing factor is stronger and faster than Piccolo's healing factor, it's not stronger and faster than Piccolo himself. In fact, the results of this episode are almost a mirror image of last episode. When it comes to speed, Piccolo can usually handle faster than light foes, while Boros at his physical peak is only sub-relativistic. If you remember from last episode, sub-relativistic is only 1-5% to the speed of light. Now, while Boros may have been able to hit Saitama to the moon at nearly the speed of light, this doesn't mean that Boros is the same speed. He has only been shown fast enough to be able to keep up with a casual Saitama who has also only shown sub-relativistic feats. Now, when it comes to strength, while the rumor of Boros only being able to destroy the surface of the planet has been debunked, with his full stats being at full planet level, that still doesn't compare to Piccolo who was already at that level in his early days. Since then, he's fused with Nail and took on the planet-busting Frieza, and later fused with Kami to increase his power even further. Not to mention that Piccolo even had the potential to kill Frost, who survived attacks from Super Saiyan 1 Goku. Now you may be thinking, oh, well it was only Super Saiyan 1 Goku when you're pondering Goku's other transformations. But let me remind you that this was Super Saiyan 1 Goku after base Goku had absorbed the Divine Key. You know, the Divine Key that shook the U universe. So, Boros is a planet buster and Piccolo dominates planet busters. You do the math. But besides speed and power, Piccolo's moves are also a lot better as he can do any attack anytime he pleases, while Boros's best attacks require him to take a form that places tremendous stress on his body. We've already seen Boros's regeneration being overpowered and outpaced by Saitama. So, for Piccolo to do the same, he'd also have to be faster and stronger than Saitama. And considering the stats we've seen from this Namekian, that would be a piece of cake. Sorry, Boros, while you may be dominator of the universe, that's just an empty title, while Piccolo is the real deal. The winner is Piccolo. You thought that was funny, huh? But we'll just see who has the last laugh when it's all said and done. Get ready Get for the, ready next, for the battle. next battle! No minions. <laughs> no henchmen. <laughs> Just the doctors.